Joel Embiid did not look good in this game. Um, the Boston Celtics always play great defense on Joel Embiid. Uh, ever since you know Brad Stevens was the head coach and Danny Ainge was still there as the GM, and then you know Brad Stevens was kind of the Embiid kryptonite. He just always had a whole lot of strategy to throw at Joel Embiid. He he knew how to use players the right way. Um, and again, Embiid can't necessarily be Superman because he's a center. And if you want to stop the Philadelphia 76ers, what do you do? You stop Joel Embiid. Um, and the Celtics are always pretty good at slowing down Joel Embiid. Now, he averages 22 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 assists against the Celtics for his career. But he's had some of the worst games of his career against the Boston Celtics. And I think most of it. Most of it. It's not just personnel. The Boston Celtics always have good personnel. They always have a good... This modern-day Boston Celtics, they, they always have a good defense. Uh, you know, Marcus Smart, Grant Williams, Al Horford, on and on and on. Jalen Brown. Um, they always have good athletic players that, that they can throw out a B, but it's really the strategy. It's really the quick double teams. You know the Sixers want to run their whole game from the post, and they just bring a super quick double team uh, from all the way across the floor, too. You know, from... Jalen Brown coming from under the rim, completely leaving his man to double Joel Embiid at the elbow, and then Embiid has to figure out how to get that the ball out of the double team and, and move it and find the open man, and that's that's been Embiid's weakness his whole career, passing out of a double team. He's gotten better at it as the years go by, uh, but I, I always thought the Boston Celtics were very good at throwing looks at Joel Embiid and uh, slowing him down. Now, he had a lot of sloppy turnovers he had a lot of just getting stripped losing the ball uh in a in a in a face-up situation um in the first quarter he was getting some calls by the way and i i feel like they stopped giving him those calls in the second half and he didn't really have an answer he didn't really know you know once he stopped getting those foul calls he he didn't really didn't really seem like he knew what was going on az king man your takes are just so bad bro like so bad so bad i know you're a troll i know i should be able to ignore you but man just horrendous take after horrendous take man dvw thank you for the super chat i would feel better if we didn't have doc as a coach he's stubborn i don't see him changing his system to fit the players joel falls too much as usual <laughs> Hey, you know me. I'm not I'm not going to sit up here and say I want Doc Rivers. I don't think anybody in this city wants Doc Rivers. Um and I think yeah, you know, we signed into a 5-year deal, so it's nothing's really going to change. We're not going to fire Doc Rivers. Uh we got to try to win a championship with Doc Rivers. Do I think the team would be better with a younger, more energetic coach, more open-minded coach, more motivated coach, Sam Cassell type? Yes. I don't think your team would be worse with Sam Cassell at the uh, at the head coaching position but it, it that's just something that's it's not going to happen so you know I, I don't want to harp on it the whole season doc rivers is here and uh you know this is what we're gonna get um but yeah i think Embiid was definitely sloppy a lot of sloppy turnovers the one pass in like the third quarter where he just was bringing the ball up the floor and kind of lobbed it over the half court line and jalen brown just ran intercepted it and finished on the other end it was a very lazy pass uh but, you know, has Joel ever been great in the first couple games of the season? I don't know. I'll have to go look back at, at what he looked like the first couple games of last season. But I do definitely feel like getting into the flow of an NBA basketball game and getting into the flow of the the intensity level of the NBA and all of the things that, that, that you have to get used to, the speed of the game and all of that, I would assume it takes Joel Embiid you know, a couple games to really – be up to NBA speed, especially because most of his career he's been resting, you know, more than playing basketball at game speed. Uh, the first couple years of his career, he wasn't even allowed to play pickup basketball. I don't even know if he's allowed to play pickup basketball right now in the summertime. You know, he's always been so quote unquote injury prone that 
he's always been a guy that you you know he can be this great, but you don't want him to be hurt, so you tell him, hey, j- just rest. Don't do anything. Just rest. You know? So he comes out in this game. I don't think he looks out of shape or anything like that. I just think he he wasn't he wasn't in tune. He wasn't in tune with the speed of the game. He wasn't in tune with the intensity of the game and what the Boston Celtics were were throwing at him. Uh, he did not look like his MVP level self. And I think if I had to guess, a lot of that is just timing and 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 uh, you know the flow of the game and things like that. When it comes to playing in the NBA, I don't. Uh, am I making excuses? I don't know. He didn't look good. I'm agreeing with you guys that he didn't look good, but first game of the season, I'm not going to freak out. Um, I think Joel Embiid rests more than he plays basketball in the offseason. So, you know, that could be a reason for it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. 